All right, guys, we got to activate this Toad's four-wheel drive system, and it would help if it had a front drive shaft. I think that'll do it. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dan H, and welcome to the project. I am out here once again with the Toad, and uh, quite frankly, I'm sick of being out here with the Toad. I want to be in the Toad, out there doing some cool Jeep stuff, but uh, it doesn't drive. It's been sitting in my driveway for about a month since we've been doing all these little projects, these episodes. Well, this video, I'm gonna pop in a drive shaft and hopefully we get this sucker moving. Uh, I got myself a drive shaft. Luckily, I had one in stock. Uh, I believe this is an XJ drive shaft. We're about to find out. XJ drive shafts are about 33 inches, and I think that's what this is. I don't know the part number offhand. I'll look that up for you so you know. But uh, I got my drive shaft, and I'm gonna put that in. Also, we uh, we just gotta put that diff cover on and get the diff fluid in there so it rolls. And before before we do the drive shaft. Uh, after we do the diff cover, we're gonna try to free up that linkage. If you want a quick recap, this thing came to me with no drive shaft in it. The shifter for the four wheel drive is all the way down, but it still indicates that it's in two wheel part time. So I guess the quick fix for the previous owner was just get rid of the drive shaft. Well, we're gonna put in the drive shaft and fix that problem. Again, I think it's the linkage. So here we go. We're gonna do some stuff. Uh, start with buttoning up this front diff. I got the fluid. And I got all my bolts cleaned up. We're gonna pop this baby on. Okay guys, here is the inside of my front Dana 30 differential. Now I suspected one of either two things. The first one being a bad front diff, but I popped off the cover, took a quick look at this thing, saw no chunks of gears, there was no shiny stuff in the fluid, so I figured the diff is good, which leads me to believe the second thing would be a bad transfer case but what i believe the problem is is that it's just not in gear so here we go let's pop this thing on hold up wait a minute hold up wait a minute something ain't right i see daylight oh come on i think i'm missing my vent tube nipple yeah look at that missing my vent tube nipple and uh <laughs> looks like i'm completely missing my vent tube altogether all right, I found myself a spare front Dana 30 vent tube nipple. Luckily, I had one in stock. So check this out, guys. Take a look at this part. This is your vent nipple thingy. <laughs> it plugs into your Dana 30. This side goes in. It's a little boogered up because I had to punch it out uh, a while back to get it out. But your hose just plugs onto here. You can zip tie it on if you want to. That'll keep it in place. And this allows the hot gases to vent out of your differential without letting water and crud and junk get in your diff. So kind of important, stupid that it's plastic. Maybe one day I'll upgrade to a metal part. For now, this is going in. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna pop this baby in. And I really don't know why they made this plastic. My only guess is in case it breaks off, like God forbid it gets in the gears, it won't do any damage. It'll just get disintegrated up in there. It is resting in its hole. I'm just gonna gently tap it with a hammer to get it fully seated. And better slide a socket on for protection. Eight millimeter should do the trick. There we go, fully seated. Check it out guys, I got a factory XJ vent tube. Luckily, I had one in stock. <laughs> There's nothing special about this, it's just a hose, I think it's about a quarter inch or so, I don't know, about a quarter inch uh, inner diameter. And the only unique part is it's got a little vent on the top. It's actually supposed to have a little plastic cap, but I guess it got brittle and broke off. No biggie, I mean, it's better than nothing. This end just usually gets tucked up right underneath the brake booster, so it's out of the way. So this should be all right. It's gonna work for now. Better than the gaping hole we had before. I'm just gonna snake this up, plug it in, and then we can finally get started on this video. Aren't you guys glad I'm including you on the ride this time instead of just talking about it after the fact? Good stuff. All right, we're gonna drop this down right about where the brake booster is. And, <laughs> <laughs> would you look at this we have ourselves a vent tube and it's got that little cap I was just talking about funny oh oh hey it's 
got the factory heat shield. And oh my goodness, look at that. It was intact all along. Jeez. I just did not see this at all. Hey guys, sometimes this happens. Um, luckily, I have an extra vent hose now. So <laughs> I'm gonna put this in stock. You never know what's gonna happen when you film a Jeep video. Uh, live. Well, it's not exactly live. I'm going to edit the crap out of this video in about a couple hours and post it as soon as I can. But uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to put in the other one in because it's clean and this needs to probably sit in some degreaser for about a year. All right, vent is installed. Let's check out our routing. So it comes out of our new little nipple. I tucked it nice and safe up underneath this upper control arm. It likes to be out of the way because we got really super hot cats right there and keep in mind we have a drive shaft spinning right above it how many times have you guys seen a vent that's been chopped up by the drive shaft yeah so uh there's actually a little hole right here the factory zip tie plugs right into this hole on the upper control arm and up top just comes right up next to this wire and i zip tied it to this little brake line i got coming around there you go that's the vent all right, going back to where we were before we were so rudely interrupted by that differential vent. Gonna make sure this diff cover is squeaky clean. Got my brake clean to help do that job. Ah, oh, I should put that, it's gross. Now we're gonna wipe down the inside of the diff cover. We're also gonna wipe down the rim that is the mating surface. We'll get that nice and clean. And while I'm cleaning this, check out the hardware I cleaned up. I wire wheeled the 13 millimeter hex bolts and I degrease them and brake clean as well. And when they're done, they're gonna be beautiful like this and not gross like this. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same for the diff itself. Don't forget, safety glasses, goggles, whatever you gotta do. You don't wanna get crap sprayed in your eye and you don't want chemicals sprayed in your eye either. Gonna make sure this is squeaky clean. I did this once before. But it doesn't hurt to clean it again. And don't forget, the bottom of this thing is a reservoir. So you gotta scoop out all this nasty stuff too. You wanna make sure this surface is really clean. Prior to this video, I went ahead and hit this with a wire wheel. It got everything smooth and deburred. I may go over this real quick with a grinder because I just picked up a clump of paper towel. See that? I want to make sure we get this smooth. There we go. Just kiss the corner. By no means am I telling you to deface this mounting surface. Just picking out some junk from these threads with that zip tie I just cut off for that vent tube. Make sure I get clean threads in there. All right, got basically a brand new bottle of Permatex high temperature gasket maker. Yeah, that's the stuff. And here we go. All right, got a nice even coat on, as even as possible. Not too thin, not too thick, not too globby, not too drippy. And what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you got the clean surface on this guy. And you can go ahead and just line it up with the holes that are still visible and then you can grab the bolts that are nice and beautiful and clean and you can start getting them in them holes All right, there you have it guys. We got all 10 factory bolts in their factory locations. What we did was we hand tightened them all and what it's gonna do is create a nice custom seal all around this entire diff cover. And then in about an hour, we're gonna go ahead and torque all of these back down. We'll do ourselves a star pattern on all 10 of these. Hello, Fiona. I should have mentioned this earlier, but before you put on a diff cover, you're gonna wanna make sure that your filler cap can come off. I cracked this loose. It is a 3 8 You could use a 3 8 breaker bar or a 3 8 ratchet or whatever. Just make sure that comes off. That's what we're gonna use to refill this bad boy once this is all torqued down in about an hour. 
All right, it's been just about an hour, so I'm gonna tighten these in a star pattern. Just give it a little zip zip. Time to fill her up. All right, I got myself two squeeze bags of Valvoline 75W90. I got the good stuff. There's nothing special to it. There's no uh, additives for my limited slip because I don't have a limited slip. If you guys have one, you might want to look up the stuff you need to get for yours. This is just a regular open diff. Uh, I think this is uh, 355 gears. That's pretty standard for most XJs. I'm going to nip the tip. Nip the tip. Squeeze bags are great for doing this job. And I'm going to put this cap on this new bag because if this doesn't take all of this juice in there, I'm just going to recap it with a completely sealed cap. So I'm going to save this intact. Go ahead and keep filling till it fills overboard. Oh, there it is. Quick cap it before it comes out. New. No. Now you can put your new cap on your semi-used bag and zip it down. Beautiful. All right, it's the next day. This diff had plenty of time to dry. I already wiped down some of the oil that dripped, but I'm just gonna hit it a little bit more with some brake clean. Another little coat. Wipe it down real good. Gonna roast off any residual oils or fluids. And gonna hit it with some Rust-Oleum semi-gloss. <laughs> the good stuff. There we go, guys. A nice painted diff. It's not the job of the century, but it looks better than rust. And uh, it's good enough for the toad. All right, guys, for demonstration purposes, before we start messing with the linkage, you can see the dash says part-time. However, the shifter indicator right down here says two-wheel drive. Now, we know it does work because when we shift it, next position is full-time, which uh, is the next one in sequence. And then, uh, yeah, it's supposed to go back down into part-time, and then, of course, it should shut off when it's fully down but it's still engaged so we're gonna mess with the linkage and see if we can slide that little pin over on the side so we could get this where it should be under the jeep this is the transfer case linkage way up here this comes out of the shifter lever and it pushes this rod back and forth which rotates on this rod back and forth and this piece goes back and forth which rotates this little lever down there uh, that's what shifts your transfer case in and out of its gears set so uh, looks pretty crappy so what I'm gonna do right off the bat is spray it down with some penetrating oil that couldn't hurt all right I got a can of PB blast and just gonna soak this sucker uh, also reminder I am wearing safety glasses I'm just gonna pop off this linkage right here with a pry tool. I want to see if I can change the shifter by hand. Let's see if I can get this out. This is crusty. Been in here for many, many years. Probably undisturbed. Don't want to break anything, especially because these plastic pieces get brittle over time. There we go. This is free. All right, linkage is free from the shifter. Now all we gotta do is we gotta pry up on this little guy right over here. Let's see if we could reach that. If we put this up, it should go into two wheel drive. There. I pulled this lever as far forward as I could go. And then I pushed it back one, two, 
and three tabs that went from two to part-time to full-time to neutral and just to test that it should have freed up right here this little yoke and now the front is a neutral and it is doing exactly what I want it to do the gears are moving nice and free so moving back from neutral we should have full-time four okay good full-time four this does nothing because it's floppy and like I said this is floppy so let's pull this back for part-time four part-time and let's match it up with all the way forward let's do it two-wheel drive do it do it do it do it there two huh that's a little annoying hmm maybe it's the indicator switch that's busted all right, I'm gonna adjust the linkage anyway because when the shifter's all the way down, I still need about a half an inch of room. So I'm gonna see if I can pop this off. I uh, already loosened it, so there, this comes out right here. Now we can swing this around. All right, I got this sucker out. <laughs> Let's see if I could loosen up this pin. Ugh. Well, tried to whack it down with a hammer, but I think I boogered it up more in the vise than anything. It's uh, it's pretty seized on. These linkages are notorious for being crappy. So maybe I'll replace it down the road one day. All right, let's see where we are. Hey, looks like I did move it a little bit. I mean, it's not, it's not the greatest linkage. It's very flexible, if you will. There's a lot of room to play. I think they make nice cable shifters. That would be nice. So I'm just gonna push this back in. All right, linkage is in, everything is fully forward. So I think that should be good. At least I know the transfer case moves freely and if you put it in neutral, it spins the front drive shaft freely. All right, well, that's still on part time, but uh, let's see if we got our positions right here. Let's put it up to part time. So that still says part time. Now let's go to full time and it says full time. And let's see if we can get the neutral. Neutral, it goes out. So we think <laughs> we're all back to normal, except we just gotta get that part-time light out. Now, it still could be the linkage. I'm not completely convinced, but uh, maybe I'll have to get a new transfer case switch. Check it out. Found myself an NP242 transfer case switch. Luckily, I had one in stock. Oh. If this linkage is good and we adjusted everything how it should be, it still might be this switch. We're right up top is this little switch. It's hard to see, but it's kind of like the neutral safety switch, only it's your transfer case indicator. Uh, here, here's what it looks like. This is the one I had in stock. So basically what happens is this little pin goes up and down and it lets the Jeep know what position the transfer case is in. So let's see if we could get this off. It's a big sucker. This is like a, a one and one eighth, I believe. Oop. Got the plug off. Let's see if we could keep this clean. And now we just gotta spin that guy out. Big one and one eighth. Yes, sir. Shouldn't be on too tight. I just need to crack it loose a little bit. Oop. There we go. Maybe we can hand thread it now. That would be magical. Okay, hey, we got it. There's the old guy. And don't lose the gasket either. All right, check it out, guys. I think we found the problem. Look at this. Springy, 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 boing, boing, boing. Look at this guy. Nothing. There's nothing in here. This last position is completely seized. Barely pops back out. So that's it. <laughs> Problem solved. So I think we still got to get it back in the Jeep. Boink, boink, boink. Boink, boink, boink. Much better. All right. Cleaned up the threads real good. And I hit this baby with some CRC contact cleaner up in there. Want to make sure all the contacts are nice and clean. I even put on that better little grommet just so it doesn't leak. That gasket, whatever you want to call it. O-ring, perhaps. So this guy is ready to rock. 
Gonna thread this back in. Can't find the hole. You got a shoe horn or some shit like that? Sorry guys, it is impossible to see. I'm just going by feel. Backing it out a little bit till the threads click in and then I'll go forward soon as I make sure it's not cross-threaded. I think I got it now. Ha <laughs> ha, she's in. Gonna give her a little turny poo to the right. Make sure it's tight. Ah, that'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. Just gotta get this plug back on. <laughs> cool, I think we did it. And of course, if you're not getting any lights at all, be sure to check the harness for broken wires. Oh, fook me. Fook me. Now, funny story, I got the new part. Had it in stock, of course, right? This is Dorman 600-558 transfer case switch. This is for an NP242, and it, uh, it didn't work. Well, it did work, but the indicator light wasn't working. Turns out I had a bad wire in the wire harness. The wire harness leading to it was good, but there's a little connector that's up in the back and there was a wire broken from that connector. So I took it all out, took apart the connector and I re-soldered the wire where it was broken, plugged it all back together the way it should be. And I got a factory wire harness and a factory connector that works now and everything is good. We got good linkage. We got a good switch and a new wire. And that's how <laughs> you fix a transfer case indicator. All right, we are in two. So here we go. Two, one up, boom, part time. Jackpot, it matches. Now let's go another one up to full time. And boom, <laughs> part, full, part, two, and up into neutral, <laughs> yeah, buddy, this thing works. All right, guys, front drive shaft time. So I'm going to need a drive shaft from the yoke of the diff all the way up to the yoke of the transfer case. I'm looking for something at about 33 inches, give or take uh, about a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna see what I have in stock. Luckily, I already found one. And here we are. Here is the drive shaft that I had in my backyard. I'm pretty sure this is an XJ drive shaft. We're at about 33 inches here. Uh, notice we have a sleeve here. This is a sliding drive shaft. You wanna make sure when you use a drive shaft, it's not seized. This one slides back and forth. We also have a Zerk fitting right here for grease. So you're gonna want to have a grease gun over here. And also I got some axle grease on hand because I'm gonna grease these caps. Careful with these, the needle bearings will fall out everywhere. I should probably take them off that way. There, we'll throw some fresh grease in there. We'll grease up what we can. Uh, got a nice stock factory XJ drive shaft for the front, double carden over here. Uh, you're also going to need some hardware. Luckily, I had some Jeep drive shaft hardware in stock. So the XJ drive shaft hardware you're going to need is going to come in two sets of four bolts. First, you're going to need the transfer case, two axle shaft bolts. These are about two inches long and they're going to fit right in here. They are M8 by one threads right there, little big guys. But then you're gonna need ones for the front yoke. You're gonna need these brackets and you're gonna need these smaller bolts. These are M7 by one and they're about one inch. So these fit on the bracket like so. And then the bracket clamps right into the yoke of the front differential. So that is that, M7 by one, M8 by one. You can tell the difference. They're a little meatier than the ones that are on the differential, but they are both eight millimeter. So that's convenient. And also one other thing, I clean these bolts up really, really good, put them in the vise, and I hit them with the wire brush. You can see it reveals some old blue in the threads. What well, that is, that is Loctite. So we're gonna wanna put Loctite in just as it was from the factory. So we're gonna hit these all with a little bit of Loctite 
We'll get them in nice and secure. And one other thing, this drive shaft was missing when I got this XJ, so these yoke threads are pretty boogered up. I'm gonna just give these threads a good cleaning before I put a new bolt in with Loctite. Got the transfer case in neutral now. There we go. We also, also have the front elevated a little bit. Got the wheels off the ground. And this is gonna make us be able to rotate our yokes. Oh, definitely chalk your wheels as a rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. It's always good to make sure you have your wheels chalked for safety every time you're doing drive shaft stuff. So now this yoke will move when we spin the tires. That'll help us out tremendously. And also, right up here, we got the drive shaft yoke moving freely from the transfer case because it is a neutral. All right, we're gonna take the double card inside. Just gonna slide it up here first. We're gonna rest it right on the transfer case cross member. We're gonna pair up the yoke for the front diff. Rest it just like that. It's very important. You wanna make sure both of these caps from these U-joints are resting inside this little tab here. Got that little tab right there. You wanna make sure they're resting flush behind the tab on both sides. There we go. That's a good shot of that. Very important. You don't want to crush this thing in crooked. Just a gentle tap. Make sure it's seated flush. A small dab of that blue thread locker. There we go. Start that by hand. And the nice clean threads. Very nice. And we'll get these in here with that eight millimeter. I'm not gonna crank them down all the way until I get the other side on. So we'll just do these two and then we'll put the bracket on the other side. More thread lock. I got the bolts on nice and tight. They're not torqued to spec because when I put a lot of torque on them, it spins the drive shaft. So we'll have to tighten them down completely when this vehicle is on the ground and not in neutral so it doesn't spin on us. Uh, I want to make sure you guys know that these things are supposed to be nice and snug, these brackets. So if this is on all the way and there's still some play, that means either you got the wrong size or these are stretched out and they're no good. So make sure they're very, very snug. Make sure you get the Loctite on them and make sure they're torqued properly because you do not want this thing vibrating off while you're driving. All right, so the transfer case part of this axle is gonna be just about the exact same as the front. We're gonna rotate it to line up and then we're just gonna pull it out so it lines right up. Put a little drip on the first two. And we're gonna slide them right into their homes. Let's give a rotate. Now, if this side is slightly ajar, you can always give it a little adjustment with a pry bar. Give it a give it a little pull right back into place. Make sure it lines up. Again, you're gonna want these little tiny tabs nice and in line. You don't want any cap on the tab or outside the tab. You want to make sure it's snuggled nice and safely in its home. Last two get locked tight as well. Make sure you grease your Zerk fitting. You want to lube this nice. Uh, also, you can check any other drive shafts or U-joints you might have. All right, I got all eight drive shaft bolts on, front and rear. Well, I should say both front. Now I just have to <laughs> drop this thing down and make sure they're all nice and tight. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. I think this is toad video number seven. We did a whole bunch of stuff in this video. We did the front diff cover. We did the transfer case linkage, the transfer case switch, and the front drive shaft. 
Now I joked around in this video saying I was very lucky to have things in stock. I'm very thankful to have things in stock because I've been blessed with a bunch of XJs over the years. Uh, been able to maintain and uh, store a lot of parts. So if you guys have any issues finding parts, let me know. I'll be happy to try to source something for you. I'll throw all the parts and the part numbers and the links I got them for in the description of this video. So uh, yeah, just want to help you guys out. Hopefully this toad will run and drive. Unfortunately, I busted a rear drum piston, so I can't celebrate and drive this sucker on the road just yet. I got to do some brake works, bleed the brakes, but uh, that was a big, big momentous occasion getting this drive shaft in. Uh, best case scenario, so I didn't have a busted diff. I didn't have a busted transfer case. I just had a little linkage out of whack and a bad bed shifter switch. So <laughs> best case scenario, $50 in parts and a couple days work. So that's it. Planes are coming. Yep, every time it's a nice day, I got those planes going overhead. Very distracting, but what are you gonna do? It's just where I live. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, make sure you comment down below, share this video with all your Jeep buddies, and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.